Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Games from Scratch. Today, we're talking about the Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit. The name kind of says it all, Ruby. And Ruby is the powering language behind it. To be honest, I've never been a real big Ruby guy. I tried to get into Ruby and Rails when it first came out. It had a terrible ecosystem on Windows, and I never really went back. But I know some people out there absolutely love Ruby, and people have been asking for me to cover this one for a couple of years now. So I finally am. And the reason why I am is I just got this in the itch.io uh, justice bundle that is running right now. Let's stay out of the politics of that. We'll stick to uh, just straight up game development topics today, but if you picked up that bundle or you're interested in that bundle, Dragon uh, Ruby Game Toolkit is part of it. So you can get this for as little as $5. So otherwise, you're looking at a purchase price of what are we looking at? $47.31 US. Yeah, that's a very random number. Uh, and it's it's a, quite a number to pay. It's not expensive. It's, I'm not going to say that straight out, but you don't really get access to it. But the nice thing here is he's made it so if you are one of any number of things, you can get a free license. Just send him an email. So if you make $2,000 or less a month, or under 18, or you're a student of some kind, or you are a teacher, mentor, or parent that wants to teach kids how to code, or you work in public service or a charitable sector, email him, give him a description, he'll hook you up. I like that that is there. I just wish that it was easier for everybody to get a hold of it because there's a, so many game edges these days that the minute you put anyone, any kind of a barrier in front of people, they just move on. So anyways, back to Dragon Ruby itself. This is basically a Ruby runtime for game development. Some of the creators behind this are people behind... Um, the SDL, really, really popular library. And here is why you might consider using Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit. It's dirt simple APIs capable of creating complex 2D games. It is fast as hell, powered by the highly optimized C code written by Ryan C. Gordon, the creator of SDL. Um, you've probably heard of SDL. It is the underlying technology behind a ton of games, such as Braid and many, many others. Plus, it is used as the setup code for many commercial games, in fact. Um, it's battle tested. There's actually shipped some uh, products products uh, on various different consoles. It is tiny, really tiny. Uh, entire engine is a few megabytes. Hot reloads are supported to reload code, optimized to provide constant feedback to the developer, uh, productive, uh, productive and an absolute joy to use, turnkey builds for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux with seamless publishing to itch.io, and cross-platform, so PC, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, Nintendo, Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. Uh, although for consoles, you need to have a specific license, NDA verification, and so on. Uh, but that's basically true of any console trying to publish for them. You need to have a licensing agreement in place with the console manufacturers. So essentially, that is the idea behind Dragon Ruby. We get a little bit into who the developers are here. Here you can see a simple Hello World uh, kind of example. I am actually, again, not a big Ruby developer, so we're not going to be seeing me typing a whole lot of code here. But what you can see here is basically the way you feed things out. There is one function. This is your game's entry point. It is tick. And they've tried to take the simplest approach for everything here. So you don't worry about things you would normally work at. They assume that your computer is going to be able to handle 60 frames per second. It runs at 60 frames per second. If you want to run at 30, you can't. Want to run it at 90, you can't. It's fixed to 60. So you don't have to worry about uh, dealing with different frame rates. Everything runs at a fixed frame rate. So if you want to update and move something by two pixels, you'll move it by two pixels on every computer capable of running Dragon Ruby. So also they've done other things to kind of, they take some of the complexity out, but they take it out by taking away the power as well. Everything runs at uh, 1280 by 720 internally, and they handle the scaling to various different devices, various different platforms. So if you wanted to run at a different resolution, you can't. When it is changed in resolution, they take care of the complexity for you. So they're taking care of some of the most common egregious stuff you have to deal with as a game developer, but they're taking care of it by taking the option away from you. Just something to be aware of right up front. Okay, so here you can see they have outputs. And there are six kinds of outputs that you can handle. These are basically things that you are drawing. Uh, so for example, you can have solids, labels, sprites, lines, borders, and sounds. So if you want to draw a sprite, you basically dump it into the sprites output. So here you can see they're creating a sprite at 200 by 200 uh, position uh, relative to the bottom left corner. Um, 50 by 50 in width named Ninja. Uh, I think there's a rotation and so on going over here. So the instruction, the, the documentation is available for what all of these parameters are. Uh, we'll kind of look at that a little bit later on. So you see there are 
basically just the six things that you defined. At the same time, inputs are done the same way. So you can see, uh, let's see, where do we got one here? Inputs are handled in. So instead of doing the out, we've got the input. So instead of the output, so outputs are where you define the data that you are defining. So things like, again, the sprites and so on. Inputs is where you get the input into you. So you can check the controller, controller one. Uh, you can check the keyboard status, so on, using the inputs array. So here's checking for the keyboard, key held right key and it's it's basically that simple then we've got things like for game state uh, and here we go kind of keep showing going on there just that's where you can check for collisions and so on you also can pass data back out to um one of the parameters there so that is again the args args is kind of where your persistence go you send values out to args you send outputs out to args you get inputs in from args and that is kind of the crux of it so here you see there are binaries available for mac os linux and Linux Raspberry Pi and GTK as for Windows as well, 64-bit uh, builds, and they actually do a fair number of updates here. Now, where I do find things a little bit lacking is the documentation could definitely be better. Um, so we're going to go and take a look at things right now. So again, this is all designed to be very, very simple. So here it is extracted. So this is Dragon Ruby when you get into things, like once you've got it installed, Dragon Ruby is this simple. The big thing here is you've got Dragon Ruby EXE and then you've got your publishing tool. Uh, See so if you want to go ahead and publish things. By default, it expects your game to be called My Game. If you go into the My Game folder, you're going to find there's documentation, a little bit more detail on how things work. So for example, if you want to look up how sprites work, uh, there's sprites.md. And this is basically the kind of documentation you are looking at. So we saw earlier on, when you basically, to create a sprite, you just pass it out to the sprites output. You see here, X, Y, width, height, and path. That is the basics to define a sprite. And in fact, if you don't path in a path, it'll still even give you just a default out. And then we got more and more levels. So we got things like path, angle, alpha, saturation, uh, red, red, green, and blue. Uh, those kind of complete all of the parameters that you can pass to in handling a sprite. But this is an example of what the documentation looks like. Now let's head on back over to the folder, you're going to see kind of got a breakdown of the things you are looking at. And you're going to probably think, okay, what about uh, loading tile maps? Or there's there's nothing in there for this at this level. So that's kind of where you're missing. There's no high level toolings. There's no map editor. This is a very code focused approach you're going to be taking. But once you're ready to go ahead and run my game, it's basically just a matter of opening it up in that folder. So let me bring my command window down here. Let's maximize that so you can see it. All right. So here we are in the folder. So I just go uh, dragon ruby like so and then uh what was it called uh my game actually if you do just here dir start exe oh there's my problem all right here we go so i'm now in the dragon ruby folder i want to run dragon ruby exe and then you pass no default it will automatically run the my game one i'm going to go ahead and we'll run that and it's coming up off screen. So let's bring that guy in. And there you see the end result. Again, a 1280 by 720 window. If you scale it up to a different resolution, it just handles the scaling for you. That is a concern that you don't take. And here you can see basically simple hello world being dumped out, a logo, and another piece of text. Uh, so let's go back over here. We'll take a look at the code. So that was in my game. Where's my code? Here we go. So let's open up. Yeah, here, let's, let's do that a little bit different. All right, so here we are, and we'll just open this whole folder. All right, so here we are. We're opening up the directory that we're in. I'm just going to go through there. So there's my game. There is the app. So there's where the data is also stored as well, main.rb. And you can see here is the app we just saw running. So basically, they spit out a label at position 580 by 500 with hello world text. Again, you don't really have to worry about coordinates because everything is 1280 by 720. So you don't have to worry about you know width divided by two or anything. You can literally just use relative coordinates for everything, and it takes care of that for you. We create these two labels here, and we also spit out a sprite. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, the thing is, if you're going to want to go the next part, you're going to probably want to jump into the sample section. And this is where the majority of the actual documentation is. So if you want to learn how to do something, you can see here on the left-hand side, there are a ton of samples available in various levels of complication. So we can go here. Um, so loading and saving a game, you want to see how to do that. Go in here and then boom, here's the code for lowering and loading and saving your game. You can see here, there's a ton of documentation going on. Let's say we want to do a, a platformer. So we're jumping inertia. There we go. Load up the code there. Here is the documentation and an entire project for uh, a simple platform. So we want to go ahead and run that. We just go basically go back here. So, okay, maybe I've got that a little zoo too zoomed. Let me just scroll that out a little bit. All right. So here we want to run that. We go um, dragon ruby and then that's under, I think, was it samples? Yeah. And all right. What was that actually called? 
uh, 0 underscore 8. 0, 8 there. Here, jumping inertia. Go ahead and run that. And of course, it's off screen. And here you go. Here you can see the end result. So um, there is the example showing you how to accomplish common tasks that you would do in traditional 2D gaming. Uh, we also got, again, some more complete game examples here uh, available. So we'll go down here for example. Let's go back into our code editor. You see down here, we've got full games like Pong, um, Dueling Starships, Flappy Dragon. So let's do that one, 99 sample, Flappy Dragon. All right, so we do Dragon, Ruby, Samples, 99. And let's find us some Flappy Dragon. All right, here we go. And uh, if you've ever done Flappy Dragon, it's just space bar to control. I suck at these games. There is music playing, by the way, but I don't have it capturing, so you shouldn't hear anything. There we go. That is a simple, complete game. You see over here, here is the code controlling it. Uh, the entry point is, again, still that ticks, but you can see how you could make a more complicated and complete game with input, with audio, with graphics, and so on, uh, all using this. Again, some of the nice things about Dragon Ruby is the uh, the runtime. You don't have to uh, restart anything. You make a change to your game. It'll do a hot reload, automatically handle it. But you are looking at very much a, a code-focused framework. Uh, it's going to make some design decisions for you. That is something you may or may not like. Again, my actual... Uh, Biggest beef here is, and I get the developer, developers all about, uh, don't want to go open source, we need to get paid, we can keep doing the support for this. And I get that 100%, but you still need to give people easy access to it. People need to either have a time trial or a fully functioning demo on your website. There's a sandbox you can check out, but it doesn't actually uh, really showcase the product properly. And I think that that's going to limit them to a degree. They really have to revisit that whole approach, do a time limited demo, something like that. That would make all the difference in the world. Let people get this down, get their hands on it for two or three weeks time and then try to get them to pay because trying to get in this day and age even though to some people you know 47 dollars 31 cents is nothing and others even if you buy it right now five dollars to other people that's a huge amount of money and they're going against free and you got free and really good out there so i, I think they're making a mistake by not making it fully available but if you are a ruby developer that is looking for a code focused development method and you like the approach they took you could rapidly create games with this guy for sure again i'm not a big ruby dev so i can't give a lot uh, of opinion that way i do find the code uh, very straightforward and easy to understand though so from what i'm seeing here from the demos uh it's, it's got nice solid code the other thing i would definitely recommend to them though is they need to have a one stop one page complete list of functions and arguments so you should have your args input output all that stuff completely documented all in one spot i couldn't find myself a handy one place reference for everything maybe it exists and i just didn't find it but as far as i can tell it doesn't exist you kind of got to go through the demos you got to go through the little piecemeal pieces of documentation hopefully they can put all that together in one document and it gets people a whole lot easier to get going. So you change those two things, centralize your documentation and make some kind of an easy access limited version people can get their hands on, a time expired or something like that, uh, that will make all the difference in the world for adoption. But as it stands right now, having a paywall in front of a game engine that you can't try out first, whew, that just seems like a big mistake to me, which is a shame because I like the technology behind it. I like the experience of working with it. It kind of reminds me of a slightly more powerful love, the Lua powered game engine. It's just in this case, obviously you're dealing with a custom Ruby runtime that is capable of going a cross platform, plus a build system and that handles multiple environments and so on. Definitely an interesting engine. And if you picked up that itch.io bundle, you own this already. So if you want to check out Dragon Ruby, now is the cheapest time to do so. If you are from the Dragon Ruby team, I know you've documented how you don't want to have a free version. I'm just telling you, you're making a mistake, in my humble opinion. The rest of you, let me know what you think. Let me think, you know what you think about the lack of a free version to, you know, to get your hands on and try it. If you think it's as big of a mistake as I do, let me know that in the comments down below. Or if you don't think it matters, let me know that as well. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.